So as you guys may know, Snapchat has some of the most amazing VFX and post effects inside their program. I love using the templates that they have because many of these templates contain really stunning VFX and post-processing effects just that you could take and customize for your own projects. I've used the fire from one of the templates as well as water around my makeup looks and I've many times used the Kira Kira and the smoothing effect. And so these things are really amazing and they're actually pretty easy to find inside Lens Studio. Um, using VFX as well is amazing. There's limitless things that you could do with particles and working with these VFX. So I'm gonna give you guys a little breakdown of how to navigate the interface and find the VFX and post-processing effects in Lens Studio, as well as edit the VFX and customize a little bit so that you can make them whatever you want. <laughs> so let's get started and jump into Lens Studio. Hey everyone and welcome back. In this workshop, I'm gonna show you how to add post effects and VFX in your effect on Lens Studio. So to get started, just select your project or a brand new project and open it up. And what we're gonna do is go up to the top menu and go to window and we're gonna click panels and then hit default layout. And so now what you should see is your inspector, your preview, and we're gonna take that preview and we're just gonna click it and drag it out here. And so now you'll see that you see yourself at this moment probably without any post effects. And you could toggle between this and the uh, actual video of somebody else if you want to move back and forth and just kind of like compare the effect on different scenes just to see if your lighting sometimes might affect the scene differently than other lighting. So I always like to check on multiple videos when I'm making effects, especially with post effects or with particles or anything like that. So what we're going to do is in our camera area, we're going to actually go and we're going to add our first post effect. So to navigate the post effects section inside Lens Studio, you can click this plus sign and go over to post effects and you'll see that they have color correction, smoothing, analog TV, and a couple of different options here laid out. Underneath that, you'll see color correction. These are all presets like LUTs and these are different things that could change your scene to something like black and white or something like a sunset color or something like that. So for now, I'm just going to turn that down. And so we could also click here, and I think there's one that is called Red Lips. And I kind of like that because it looks kind of pretty. Um, there's a very popular effect online that people use that does this. So those two together look really nice. So 1 and 0.48. And so now if we want to go and try out some of these post effects, I'm going to move through them and just show you what they do. So the smoothing effect is kind of like a retouch that touches up the entire screen. I prefer this to retouching with makeup because it's very um, overall smooth and nice and it looks similar to the Snapchat official filters. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to turn it down to about 0.3. And so now it's just like a subtle retouch. Um, once we go back to the post effect menu, you could see analog TV. This is one I tend to like to use for my character effects, especially when doing things like dolls that look like they're from the Y2K era. So I usually will turn off the distortion and I t tend to take this and bring this chromatic aberration down. And then the intensity of the noise I usually will bring down. But I really like the chromatic effect that makes it look like a vintage TV. So now going back here in post effects, you'll see that we have color gradients, color remapping, distortion, dithering, edge detection, halftone, oil paint. I tend to like oil paint sometimes too. This is really fun for creating effects that look like, like paintings or even creating something that looks a little bit like a like a video game character because it adds something that looks a little bit more surreal and animated to your effect that affects the whole screen. So I'm just going to turn that off. Now going back to post effects, let's see if we could play around with something else like the shake effect. So the shake effect is kind of cool because it's doing something different to the camera texture and you could turn this down or you could intensify it. Now if we want to add some VFX, uh, there's a bunch of them in the asset library. And so what I usually do is go up here to asset library and I go to VFX. And then I like to add things like snow or you could use an unsharp mask or you could create particles like with the uh, Kira Kira. They even have like a fountain. It's just there's tons of different uh, VFX inside Lens Studio already. And so I like to sometimes mix the sparkles together. It looks really nice. And some of my most popular effects have used that before. So I always recommend it for beauty effects or beauty brand effects. Adding in some sparkles is really nice, even if you have it to be toggled on and off. So let's go and add some sparkles into this scene. So I'm going to use the sparkles post effect and I'm just going to import it like that. 
I also am a really big fan of the smoke. I love the smoke effect. It really adds something nice to character filters, especially if you're doing something with fire or you're doing something where the character is like a bad guy or something like a villain. It's really fun to add. So I'm going to go and add these sparkles by clicking on them here. So what you see is whatever uh, VFX that you chose in the asset library or anything from the asset library will get imported right into the resources panel. So you can click it and drag it right up here under your effects. And so now you'll start to see sparkles pop up. And you can go and click on the sparkles blocks right here. This is the uh, area where you change it and go to the material and select it by right clicking on it and you could edit it. And so now here you could adjust the brightness or the size and sometimes it disappears. So what you'll have to do is click the refresh button up there and you'll see it pop up again. You could also change the particle here as well by clicking on this, by clicking select and by saving your file and then so first I'm going to save my file. I just saved it as untitled. And then you could click on this, right click it inside your resources panel. And if you can't find it, just type in sparkles. So we're going to actually right click on the sparkles atlas file and go to show and finder and then click on it and open it in Photoshop by dragging it and dropping there. So if you wanted to say edit the sparkle to be something else, like let's say we want to do a star. I'm just going to grab one quick. Okay, so let's say we want to do a star. I'm going to take the star and I'm just going to place it here like this. I'm just going to change the size. And then I'm just going to take that one. I'm just going to show you just quickly how I would do something like this. And then like that, I'm going to bring it down in size. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and remove it. And I'm going to blur just a bit. I'm going to add a back, black background. We're going to click and open this up here. And so now you can see I've updated my texture. So as long as you map it to their template, you can change the sparkle to any particle you like. So that's how you create a post effect and use VFX in Lens Studio to get started. We'll touch on this a little bit more in other lessons. So I'll see you in the next workshop. Bye.